the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed or rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth before we could begin our today's discourse it is essential that each and every believer make sure that he has been in the filling ministry of lord god the holy spirit by using rebound and getting back into fellowship and become a partaker of that living realm of lord god the holy spirit whose primary work who permanently indwells in us who permanently wants to control us so that when we are born again by believing in faith alone of Christ alone in his salvation our activity to men spirit which gets activated this activity to men spirit could get energized by the ministry of lord god the holy spirit when lord god the holy spirit energizes that human spirit not through any emotion or ecstasy or gibberish signs which the people they want to look among you and tell you are a man possessed with the demon even even in fact unbelievers will say when you speak gibberishly in tongues that this man is a man of demon but when the bible clearly tells to us that after the completion of canon the vocal cords have been controlled by the angastamuthas demon just to perpetuate duplicately duplicating everything represent represent or reproducing the same thing is the work of satan satan never has any interest as such to keep the sacred ornaments as sacred even the pathetic condition to note that though this man they have been told several times whether the evangelism work has been done properly or not the hindu mythology followed by the pattern containing to seek and to give a human sacrifice is really very pathetic to note in fact even the true hindus never believe to give a sacrifice of a male or or a female particularly male to cut down their head and tell that i am giving a living sacrifice unto the lord as such in one of the event of yesterday's news we could find a 25 year old guy giving taken a 3 year old kid in one of the remote village of andhra pradesh he took him and he did some sort of rituals which they call puja after those rituals he cut his throat and threw his neck apart and body apart and when the mother of that kid was searching she couldn't find him then she thought why the door is closed for a long time and she went and opened the door and she could find the 25 old year man was sitting there and when her mother started to scream this man left the place and went off and chill now the police are searching for him says the report in the tv whenever we look such kind of instances the man who's worshiping in the hindu mythology it really breaks our heart to know any human being irrespective of the religion but of course christianity is not a religion it is a relationship whenever they could ask it is for such kind of a great extension they are asking to give a human sacrifice to the lord so that he could be pleased is really very pathetic to note though in this enlightened period where we know very well the reasons and the failures of what it is happening or it is not happening even if not at least the other parts of this religion if they do not know what it is at least by the divine laws of establishment which lord has established for us 
privacy of your freedom, privacy of your relationship. How could this 25-year-old kid cut the throat of a three-year-old guy, old, old boy who was playing, and he took him, he said, I will have some work with you. He just did some rituals, which they call as puja. And he took a knife and cut off his throat. Many men may have been thinking, even when Abraham took Isaac, as if God really likes to take the sacrifices of a human being. There are many enough men in this world who are thinking in that manner. Why God asked then Abraham to give as a sacrifice to him? And the problem why these men, they are not able to clearly tell them as per Jeremiah 7, 23 and 24, I think. That it is not even into the mind of the Lord to take human sacrifices as an offering to him. It has never come to my thought, saith our Lord. Then you may ask me, why is it that Abraham was being told to give his son as a sacrifice? It was a test. Not to literally give him as a sacrifice. So that God could be pleased. It was a test of faith so that Abraham could become father of faith and father of nations. And there literally as well, when he was being endured for the result of his faith that he had in the Lord and the doctrine that he has learned. But never it was to the Lord to take women as a sacrifice for any of his deeds. Satan continued there, the duplication among the religion, blind world. There are some sect in this Hindu mythology they call as Agura. The first qualification for him to enter into that Agura is to get a human skull. And that skull could be found in any one of the graveyards. And in that skull, he has to ask begging for the people so that he can go on survival upon that. Later on, he has to eat the dead meat of a man. It's very devilish to the core whenever we look and we think and we consider about these people. When the TV show about them, that these were the men of such, such kind of a trance. And I suppose that no God has told except if it were Satan behind those gods and not God. And differentiating between the capital G and the small g. The capital G represents my Elohim, my Adonai, that is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even demons tremble and tell that this is the true and living Lord. This is the son of the Most High God. But this man who are being influenced by the demonic thoughts without believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose minds and hearts and eyes have been blinded not to know the truth, not to hear, not to have a thorough system of understanding what it might be, what it would be. It's very pathetic for us to know, dear brethren, very much pathetic. How could man ever ask a human sacrifice to be given? And many of the people who fail to understand the passage between Abraham and Isaac, why Lord asked him, in the original Hebrew, what does it say? What is the reference to the context in the grammatical realm? And what is the purpose wherewith Lord has asked that to be done? And there aren't enough men who could come back and look and understand and tell with dogmatical authority that Lord never asks a human sacrifice so that he could be pleased by taking a human blood. Dear brethren, the only blood which Lord was being satisfied on the cross was the blood of his dearly beloved son, the only Monegini, the only eligible one, none other but who came in the form of man, God, man, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how pathetic it is that whenever we look upon those 
Media Network News. That was brought into light and we could come to know as in yesterday's message. As such, how many of the people they have really killed small children? How many of the people have literally cut their throats? As if God would be pleased. And in northern part of my country, India, they said, if we could give a sacrifice of this man, rains will come. And they literally cut off his throat and divided his head from his body. Even that was shown in the media. And since nowadays we can have an access to the web or to the network channels which really give along with this media of this news, you can just log into YouTube and check out. And the TV9 or in other channels which they get through or any other CNN or IBN, you will definitely find out the news related to the human sacrifices what they give. But no God has asked to give us a human sacrifice apart if it were not devil to the core. Even devil knows that he is a son of the Most High God. But this man did not know that our true and living Lord has given once and for all sacrifice. And if there are no seasonal rains, if there are no climatic conditions wherewith it could be favorable for you, for your food, for your crop, why is the poverty in our country? The only simple logic reason behind that wherewith we cannot enter into the politics there is always a difference between a state and the church. And we cannot go further to tell to them why the politics are so such and such. And we cannot enter into the state and tell, do this, do that. But we can edify the members of our congregation in our church through the teaching of Bible doctrine and tell to them the importance, the responsibility of a citizen, what he can do as per Romans 13, 1 through 7, when he is walking upright in the sight of Jehovah. But dear brethren, any nick and corner of the world, you do find corruption. Corruption for their own destructions. Corruption for their own sin patterns to be fulfilled. Corruption to an extension that at the cost of a fellow man's life, we are happy to enjoy our own life. If the system and order of the divine law could be absolutely prosperous, and no nation can prosper without the gospel of our living Lord, no nation can properly come back to the shrine of the Lord, of Lord God Almighty, provided there is proper revolution. And who is the key? Who is the person who is going to give the proper revelation of truth? There is none other but a pastor teacher in the congregation or who stands in the pulpit can give you a proper enlightenment about the word of the Lord because he is the one who knows what is the living fellowship with Lord God Almighty when he has believed in the Lord with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher given to him at the moment of salvation and he is the one who is going to correct his church, church first priority. And then church will in return form to the society, and society will in return form into the district, and then into the state. At least if you are not believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when the pastor lives uprightly to Jehovah, the men who are following, looking in his uprightness, even they are unbelievers, they will follow the principle and the integrity of truth. And Lord blesses that nation because of this pivot that has been formed. Maybe that time the seasonal rains will come in time. Maybe that time Lord wants to prosper, he will definitely prosper that country. When the Gentile plant nations were been formed as the great plant nations for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, like the USA at present. What is the status quo? What are there? How are there? What it is? What it is not? Has not Lord richly blessed that country because they could form a pivot in it? Even we, the church age believers, today should form a pivot in us. Today we don't value what is a pivot at all, neither we know what is a pivot for a Christianity that could come out. Then how and when will this corruption eradicate in my country like India? 
how and when this human sacrifices will eradicate thinking that lord is pleased by taking such kind of a sacrifice it is not my lord god almighty my lord god yahweh my lord god lord and savior jesus christ has been pleased it is the demonic gods who will be pleased by that human sacrifice but not we because it has never even come to the mind of my Lord God Almighty to take sacrifice of a human being so that he can give you rain, so that he could be pleased and ask you to join his Agora group. Though my Lord controls the entire course of life, the entire back, the entire works that are happening around behind the scenes in this angelic conflict. Dear brethren, why do you want to waste and worry about your own life in this earth? We are here to have a life, life of Lord God Almighty in peace, in full. The peace which my Lord God Almighty gives, no one can give it. The world hates you because there is no love in them. And whenever we do find the things happening and pertaining to the word of the Lord, it's very pathetic for us to note that our own Christendom believers, our own congregational church members, our own edification is not proper and upright. Our own edification process is not in sound, in sound theological basis. Our own edification process, which should be an indispensable tool in doing the good work, is not at all available. And why will not such kind of a morons emerge out and tell? We are here to do this. Let us, let, let we do this. We are here to follow this. Let us follow this. It's very pathetic to know, dear brethren. Very much pathetic. And only enlightenment what a believer can do, or what a pastor teacher can do, is to increase the edification process rate. For it, the rate of learning should always exceed the rate of forgetting. And if this rate of learning is not being exceeded so that this man can come back and look and understand what is the truth of reality in Bible doctrine, never they will form what is their work in ambassadorship. Never they will look what is their work in witnessing. Never they will come back and understand what is the work to, extend it, to be extended for missionary so that they, when they could go and tell to the other countries or other parts where of this world they go along as Lord leads them the geographical location to sustain there with a completed pertinent doctrine for those related passages or related works where they are going when they have been thoroughly trained. These are the men they have to be thoroughly prepared and give them the gospel, not forcing them to convert, not forcing them to believe, not forcing them to have a tag that he is a man who has been having such kind of an intention to convert the people. No, we Christians do not have, neither we have learned to do that. We are here to give you the information, whether you take it or reject it or accept it or not. The same principle, what I'm telling for you all in the YouTube as well. My tapes are more than the views what the people have watched, then too I don't worry. The only reason why I'm giving it, it is left to you, whether you take it or not. We have entire world, I'm taking the entire world congregation into my account, not just one part of the world. Any one of the place where Lord, Lord wants the information to go, Lord will send it. I'm not worried that such and such place only should take. The issue is volition with you. Exactly the issue will be with the Christian true believers that is where with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has to indwell in us as number one priority, which is nothing but learning Bible doctrine. We don't have any other issues than that wherewith you can think that without this you are not possible. Without converting we are not accountable to Lord. No. It is left to you and to your evolution provided when we faithfully represent to you the correct witnessing through life as well as our lips. Our standard uprightness so that corruption could be eradicated when we stand firm, when we look firm in our thoughts, in our intention, in our behaviors. Other men respects to you when you are only not right. And when you are a leader, how will the intelligent follower will be backed up by you? Intelligent follower will not look back to you. Neither he will consider to you. Neither he will respect to you. When the leader himself is not proper, even in the country of my India, wherewith he has been given particular departments or particular heads, 
they are playing at the cost of the poor people's life. They are not doing anything good for the people of the poor. If they would have done the poor people good, maybe this wouldn't have been the reason for them to look back and come back and consider of eradication of these human sacrifices. When a man is happy with his circumstances, with his nominal life, maybe he doesn't want to worry about those things. And I'm not telling them to give them water to drink all the time whenever they ask. But rather I'm telling them to develop the systems, integrated realm with honesty of the truth. Whereas if he could put a borewell, he could go and have a water by just playing with that borewell. Make them to work. Give them the work. Show them the reality of life. Provide them the basic norms and conditions. We, the country of India, are great in our culture, in our tradition, in our honesty, in our loyalty. But certain few leaders who are fighting for their position, opposition, or XYZ, whatever they goes in the political realm. If they could be honest enough to tell upon their heart, laying their hand, that what they're doing is for the pure work for the poor people so that they could be really sustained. Like the present Prime Minister of my country, who has done some good, who has given some good information, who has made some things wherewith the people are now thinking. I don't want to speculate about the present prime minister or the past or in the future, what they are. But if they are true to the honesty and the integrity of the, of the fellow brethren, what they're going through, or fellow people or the fellow mates, what they're going through, they would be really considered about their life. They would be really thought of their life. And the present prime minister is doing well off to think about them. How many days more you want to construct your life upon the life of those poor people? That three years old kid, what does he know? As such, this 25 years old kid, he wanted to enter into some sort of a religion. Or he wanted to get the reins done of that man who has been killed. Isn't it satanic to the core? Does any, does any religion, including the other parts of the world, ask for human sacrifices? I think not. That is coming purely from your mind, from Satan. Satan alone begs you to give human sacrifice. No human has an authority to take other man's life. No human, in fact, even has an authority to go against the evolution of other man. As such, the missionaries who go to other Gentile countries who doesn't know about Christ, doesn't have any authority to go against their evolution and tell, this is right, you follow it. This is wrong, you reject it. No, show for them through the love. Tell them what is reality. Whether they accept it, reject it, laugh to them. Not accountable for you, but you have done your duty. You have blowed the trumpet. And the people take it or not, it is purely left to them. And we are neither the one to speculate nor tell that this and that such and such nation should perish or such and such people should go out. No. We are rather on return to pray so that none should perish but everyone should come to the knowledge of truth of Bible doctrine by believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we are accurate in our representation, it is Lord's work on their part. We have to do deliverance. No, Lord doesn't come directly for them and tell and talk. No, Lord doesn't talk to them over visions or dreams. Lord talks through you, provided you are faithfully prepared in the mind of Christ. When you are there in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and tell to them what is the reality of the word, then the things will definitely work out. When you are not faithfully being prepared, when you are an instrument for the Lord, and you do not know what is the work of an ambassador to the Lord, and how wise you have to be more than the serpent in doing the things pertaining particularly to evangelism, how will you do the things, dear brethren? So first your preparation will come into play. I suppose no religion will ask a human sacrifice. Though 
they want to do human good and get the approbation of Christ in any religion. And this trends what they're following under the name of Hindu is really painful to our heart to know and to understand why they have given a three years old kid as a human sacrifice. Christianity is not a religion, nor I'm comparing with religions. Christianity is a relationship with Lord God the Father through his only begotten Son on the cross. That whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have an everlasting life. So dear brethren, kindly have a note over these things as such. Christianity never claims any human sacrifice. Abraham was tested, and it was not a point to take human sacrifice for them. Satan continues and takes the tag and tells that God really needs human sacrifice and represents those things. As we have noted, the representation of Angastromuthas demon as well to control their vocal cords and tell that God needs your vocal cords and they gibberishly, emotionally jump around with their Angastramutas demon. The ultima, the principle of all this thing, what we are lacking is the Bible doctrine. Pastor teacher will communicate Bible doctrine in the pulpits. And where there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord, there the people will perish. And Bible doctrine is the only key where there is a proper revolution of biblical truth. Where there is proper intention of the word of the Lord to be communicated. Where there is proper mind that you and I have to understand. Without Bible doctrine, there is nothing, dear brethren, that you can come to know and realize what is the truth when you go without exegesis in the pulpits. Therefore, whatever time you have been given, you have to communicate the truth. Whatever thought you have been given at that particular week or the particular day, you have to communicate to that. Because anyone who is hearing may definitely transform, may definitely be changed. And we are not here to tell half-truths, like the way they say some of the men whom we meet. It is not proper to tell minister's cloth in the pulpit when our good deeds have been compared to the minister's cloth by Lord God the Holy Spirit in the original Hebrew of Isaiah 64 6. They say it would be some sort of an immature when you could tell who cares about your maturity or immaturity first you know your maturity because you as a pastor teacher do not know what exactly is the intention to be communicated by Lord God the Holy Spirit and you are becoming a hurdle for the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit that will be the ultima for you and upon you because Dear brethren, we have been given to communicate what the word tells, no matter however the chips may fall. We are not here to be cowards, but rather we have to be courageous one. We need to hold our guts and tell what is the truth. Our guts like steel. However the chips may fall, what? Who cares? We are worried only about the word of the Lord, whether it has been told so or not. When that God, the Holy Spirit, intended that our, minister, that our good deeds could be compared for our salvation to be minister's cloth, how you can tell as a pastor it would be immature? When we tell that in the pulpit, that one word may be enough for some people to be changed and to change their intention to tell. If it is a filthy wax, they may wash it again. And if it is a minister's cloth, it is fit for nothing, they will throw it out. The object of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been so precise and so clear that no way any other methodology of explanation of the word for filthy rags has been required. When it is minister's cloth, they just throw it out. They don't even touch. They don't even remember it, they don't even think of it. So was the principle of the fig leaves, so is the principle of the religion working to gain the approbation of God, and so will be the so will be the principle behind those people who are thinking that they could be saved by silver and gold, that is what by their money, by doing their some good charity works. All these things are compared to ministers cloth, just throw them out. But when the Bible tells to us very clearly it is by faith alone in Christ alone and his work alone that is a divine work which we have to go through. Who are we to compromise the, door, the very words of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and tell it would be immature? Because of such kind of a moron pastors who will be standing in the pulpit, 
who go upon for pious words, who look upon with the pious structure, and who wants to tell, okay, this is the way we will tell, this is the way we will communicate, this is the way we will proceed. That process you do with those people who are immature to you, to your mind. Not with the real Christians who really love the word of the Lord. The real Christians who know what will be the correction under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they knew what it has to be in the original, and they will be very close to God when they would know the original language of the scriptures and go for the exegesis. Because they speak about reality, they speak about facts, not about fictions. Not about the immaturity talks, what they could get. And since the pulpits have been filled by such kind of a people in the congregation, it is a tough part for us to note why this man they haven't changed. The reason is not enough guts, and the real reason behind that is it is not like God, the Holy Spirit who is reigning over them. It is purely for some pieces of bread or for some anvil of barley. They might have entered into the ministry, and that is the reason they are compromising in each and every aspect of the word of the Lord. Dear brethren, in the next step as we continue, I assume that we go for a rebound and get back into the fellowship and power over these things as well, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that they believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth in the privacy of your soul, when you tell to God the Father as an unbeliever that you believe upon his dearly beloved Son, that is the moment itself you shall have the salvation which is believing in Christ, you shall be saved. For the believer, the great mandate is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine provided when you use the privacy of your priesthood to rebound and be controlled of the Spirit, the great one who indwells in you permanently till you die. And get back and search the scriptures. And whereas for the pastor teaches the great man, it is to herald the word in sin out of season, so that Bible doctrine can be number one priority, and taken back to the care of Lord God Almighty, we are here to tell. As the Spirit leads, we have to go in that way, and we will not turn about in that method. So, as a pastor teacher, the Spirit leads to you for exegesis alone. That is the order of the day. No bona fide gift. Without the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, you cannot communicate the truth as it is in the Word of the Lord. So, herald the word in season or out of season, the unwilling trinity, the diameter of my witnesses, number one, Bible in our hands, the diameter of my witnesses, number two, and the diameter of my witnesses, the major section, is the hearers who could hear to your tapes. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses, and we need to obey God and fear God and not men. So which way you want to go, you decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sorrowing, Lord, for asking in Christ's name, Father. Amen.